Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to our channel, I'm Keegan with Dark Arrow and what we've been up to is engineering and building an aircraft called the Dark Arrow 1. We're nearing completion on that aircraft and lately we've been doing a lot of machining. This is a part that we recently machined. It started out as this 10 pound billet of aluminum, over 10 pound billet of aluminum. We brought it down to this one pound part. It's a part for the nose gear of the aircraft and it's one of the more complicated and cooler looking parts that we've made on the mill. And I thought it'd be fun to just throw a video together quick on how we did it. So how we did the fixturing, how we did the tool paths, the tool path sequence, and a lot of other good stuff in between that we learned in the process of making this part. And at the end of the video, I thought it would be good to just go over a list of key things to keep in mind when making a complicated part like this, especially on a mill like the Tormach, and then also share some of the ways that we can improve it going forward, um, not just for the next part that we make, but also for production. So looking forward to bringing that all to you guys. Okay, so before we get into the exciting machining portions of making this part and how it was fixtured and all that good stuff, just really high level, quick, wanna go over what this part is all about, some of the key features, some of the key geometry. Getting a good baseline of understanding that will help us know how to go into that whole other next step of machining this out. Okay, so really quick, we're looking at the inside of this part. Let's start down here and we'll work our way up. So we've got this little notch cut out down here. This is actually gonna hold, I'll grab it quick. It's gonna hold a little wiper seal that's going to sit like that so that's critical geometry we want to make sure we machine that really precision um, right here we've got in this inner portion we've got a sleeve bearing that's going to drop down in there and it actually locates with that little stop right there we've got two of them so this is also key geometry right in here you can see these nubs on the outside that's where bolts are going to go through and hold these two halves together we need these holes to line up Critical geometry right there as well. Other notch cut out to butt up our sleeve bearing too. Up here, we just have an open cavity. Our tube is just needs a spot to slide up into, so we don't really need to machine that as precision up here. Pin here for our shock. We need a place to hold it. So we need to be able to locate that pin and have a good spot for us to rest. That's critical. These are just pockets trying to remove material, less critical geometry. Up here on the ears, we have a pivot point. This is where a sleeve bearing is going to sit. That has to be precision machined. More bolt hole locations. The last kind of critical thing on this is it has to be flat. This is going to mate up to another half. We want that to be nice and flat. Quickly on the outside here, less critical on the outside. We just want a nice finish and we want to plan out our tool paths so that looks nice and pretty to the outside world. So not critical geometry, but critical in terms of looks. So that's the part in a nutshell. Now that we understand it better, this will give us a better idea of how to fixture it. Okay guys, a couple quick tips about your fixture plate here, the fixture plate that we used. We use this to machine both the first operation where our part sat on here like this, and then our second operation where we dropped it down into this inner pocket on our fixture, had locating features, machined out the back side of it. So to make a good part, start with a good fixture plate. A couple quick things to keep in mind. So you want your fixture plate to sit flat to your table. So we surface both the back side and the top side that keeps this whole fixture plate parallel on both the top side and the back side. When you bring it down onto your table, have a way to adequately clamp it. You can machine this flat on both sides, but there could be some bow still left in it. So put your clamps down, start in the middle, work your way out, push that material out. Now that you have a way to ensure that this is both mounted flat to your table, and rigidly to your table, you want to be able to confirm that it's square to your table. You don't want it sitting like this or like this, and you want a way to check that. So we machined in these little pocket features here, here, on this back side, and here. And that allows us to come in with our probe and confirm that it's square to our machine. Now that you have it flat to your machine, you have it square to your machine, you can 
clamp it all down. You can go about machining your first operation and your second operation. So let's get into that. This is the setup. Uh, basically just drop your billet down onto your fixture plate and then you take your tool and you tighten down your, your little clamps. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating our own voice that captures our material like this. Once those are tightened down, you can establish your datums. So for that, for Z, we have this plane here, and then X and Y, we grabbed our center. Okay, let's talk about the actual machining that we did uh, and how we went about doing that. So I actually started with our 3 8 inch, three flute, uh, flat end mill, and I came in here and I surfaced this all uniformly. That basically established this nice surface here. Once I that, had that completed, it was on to thin out the middle portion. Coming in here with our th same tool, 3 8 inch, 3 flute end mill, and doing an adaptive, 3D adaptive tool path working into our center. I wanted to leave all this material out here so the tool had something to work against. If I had started by removing all the material out here first, leaving a big section of material in the middle. If I came back in here, the tool would have nothing. You'd have a thin wall here to push up against and you could get some flex. Once we had this roughed out in the middle, we came in with our 3 8 inch ball end mill and did our finishing passes. Again, leaving all this extra meat of our stock out here as support. We actually finished the entire inside and then we moved on to our outside and we roughed out our outside out to the outer edge of this following this profile and we came all the way down all the way past our part so we machined down past our part here and so you just have a vertical wall that matched the profile of this and one other thing that we did is we left tabs on there and those tabs were used for the second machining operation we had to have a way to access those from the back side with our um, wrench so we had to drill holes in our stock all the way through that allowed access for our wrench to get through. So that's the first machining operation in a nutshell. I hope that makes sense and that allows us to get set up for the second operation. So for the second machining operation we had this whole portion of our part machined out and that allowed us to come down now onto this inner pocket of our fixture plate and it dropped down on here like this there were tabs that came out here and here and that allowed us something to get our clamps against and we had the billet of material still remaining up here so we brought our part down onto our fixture plate we have locating tabs in the middle here those match the profile of our tube they're not very high but they don't need to be so those locate it so that doesn't sit like this or like this. We have our nice flat surface here that we machined earlier. So this doesn't sit like this or like this. And then we have this tab here that located against this face here. So now it comes down like this, drops down, and then we butt it up to this tab. So now it's located. And then the sequence for tightening these clamps, we had a tab here, we brought this clamp in, and we tightened it here and here. And that drew the part into our locating feature here. Once these were tightened down, I can tighten these clamps here and here in to pinch it. And then two more back here, so six total. And that helped to keep our part held rigidly in place. Rough this whole thing out using our clamps to hold it down. Once this was roughed out to completion, we came in and we finished out our little bolt hole features all through here. Once those were finished, what we could do then is we could, with our clamp still in, drop our bolts down, tighten them all the way around take our clamps off, machine off our tabs, and then machine this to its final form. Used a parallel 
tool path of the ball end mill, um, quarter inch ball end mill through here. And then up here, same tool, we used a scallop tool path starting from inside, working our way out. So it matched the same tool path strategy by the time it got to here to make this look continuous all the way across and then cross patterned out, matching the geometry out to here. That was the part machined out to completion. Once that was done, just removed our bolts. And the whole thing came off of our fixture plate. Okay guys, that was a quick overview on how we made that part. Hope you enjoyed. I'm just gonna leave you with some improvements that we could make going forward and also some high level tips and tricks for yourself if you wanna make your own part. So for improvements going forward, we could have used better tools for roughing. They make ones that were a lot more optimized for roughing aluminum that allow for a higher material removal rate, which would have sped up the process. Another way to speed up the process is to have an automatic tool changer. I was manually changing out those tools. So with an automatic tool changer, it could have automated the process more. Another thing that would be nice is to create a pallet that fits onto a uh, vacuum table type setup to make your setups quicker and easier between part changes. So that's something that we're looking forward to for production to streamline our manufacturing process for machining these parts, making them better and quicker and just more hands off in the future. All right, so for some tips and tricks for you, for your machining, I'm just gonna I have a list here I'm gonna go through. So first and foremost, Get your machine set up properly. So make sure that it's level, make sure that it's trammed properly, make sure that everything's square to itself and get your machine set up and dialed in. Uh, you can only hope to make parts as good as your machine is set up. So if your machine is off, your parts are gonna be off as well. On the flip side, you can have the best machine, whether it be a Kern or a DMG Mori or a Haas and have that dialed in perfectly. If you don't get your fixturing right, you don't get your tool paths right doesn't matter how good your machine is. So it's a all encompassing thing. You need to have both your machine dialed in and your process dialed in and they all work together to make a good part. Have a way to properly clear your chips, whether that's flood coolant or a mist coolant. You don't wanna be recutting those chips or having them stick to your sidewall and then having the cutter come back because that can leave uh, indents in your part and leave or lead to a worse surface finish. So have a good way to clear those chips out. If possible, try to machine geometry to completion for each operation. So an easy way to think about that, if you have a through hole for a part, you wouldn't machine half of that through hole, flip your part over and then machine the other half of that through hole. Uh, you'd machine that all the way through. Same thing for other geometry, whether external or internal, try to machine it all the way through to completion. Put extra effort into your setups, ensuring that everything is square and flat relative to your machine. Make sure that you don't have any burrs or chips or anything that would lead to um, the geometry of your part not sitting flat or not sitting square to anything. So put extra effort into that. Remember that no matter what the material is, nothing is infinitely rigid. Things can bow, things can potato chip. So it's always good to confirm with a feeler gauge or some other measurement device that everything is flat, parallel, square, relative to the rest of the machine. Be mindful of the order of operations of your tool paths. This kind of falls in line with the rigidity. So for example, with that part, instead of machining out for operation one, instead of machining out the outside, leaving that big hunk of material to remove uh, with those flimsy sidewalls, we machined out the inside first, allowing all that meat on the outside to act as good rigidity for when our tool was coming through there. So, Keep in mind the order of operations for how you go about establishing those tool paths. Another thing to do is to check that the quality of your tools. Make sure that your tools are nice and sharp. Make sure that they don't have run out and make sure that the equipment that you're using to measure those tools is also calibrated as well. Uh, if you're using tools that haven't been calibrated for a while or they're not reading properly, you're not gonna have a good way to confirm if the equipment or the tooling that you're using is um, dialed in as well. Another thing to think about that makes machining a lot easier that I've come to appreciate and learn is that if you're in an environment where you can both design and machine the tool or machine the part itself, it, it helps a lot in simplifying the process. Design for manufacturing or design for machining 
And if you're if that's new to you or it's unfamiliar to you, there's a lot of good guides out there online on how to design for machining. And I'll leave a link in the description below um, to those. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. If you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I would encourage you to do so. We have more content like this coming, more tips, more tricks on machining, and also stuff related to the aircraft. So I'm still learning this machinist thing. I'm still new to it. My background is more in engineering. So I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that know a lot more than me. If you do, if there's something that you want to teach me or some tips and tricks that you wanna share, leave them in the comments below. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Catch you next time.